Most software engineers that I talk to are learning the wrong programming language. They have no idea what they should be focusing on, and that's why I want to make this video. Today, I'm going to talk about the best languages to learn in 2025 and why. And I'm going to tie all of these to a particular goal and person. So I'm not just going to straight up tell you learn Python or learn JavaScript or learn Go. I'm going to tell you why you should learn those languages. And if you're the type of person who would benefit from spending the time to master them. Anyways, with that said, let's get into the video and start by talking about your overall goal. Now, like I said, I can't just blindly prescribe anyone, you know, go learn Python or go learn JavaScript or go learn this language. You need to know why you're learning it. And in order to do that, you need to start from your goal. So are you looking to land a job as fast as possible? Are you looking to do front end web development? Do you want to work with mobile applications? Do you want to get into AI and machine learning? You need to ask yourself, what do you want to do with software development? So before you go through the rest of this video, pause, ask yourself the question, why am I learning to code? And why do I even want to learn another programming language? If you can come up with the answer to that question, and you know what you're interested in working with and why that's going to help you determine which language to use. Okay, so with that said, let's start going through the languages. I have 10 on this list, I'm going to spend about a minute for each of them and explain to you some quick kind of features or information about the language, and then ultimately who should pick that or learn it. So the first language or languages on my list is JavaScript slash TypeScript. Now I'm putting these together because if you learn JavaScript, you might as well just learn TypeScript. And that's what you're going to be using in a majority of the work that you would do with this language. Now JavaScript is the language of the web. If you want to do anything related to web development, you need to learn this language, especially if you want to do anything related to front end design or user interfaces. JavaScript makes it extremely easy to build websites. There's popular frameworks like React, Angular and Vue, which are used all around the world and for millions of jobs. And JavaScript is the most popular programming language in the world. It has the most number of jobs. And if you want to land a position as a beginner, this is probably the easiest way to get into development. And this is a very beginner friendly language. Now that said, JavaScript is not the best for low level or high performance systems. It is very competitive because pretty much everyone knows the language. I would really only pick this as your first language if you are someone who does want to get into web development. If you want to get into robotics or you want to just work on the back end, you don't care about UI or front ends, then probably skip this and move on to something else. That said, it is a great choice. And most people I do recommend starting with JavaScript simply because it's really easy to see what you're building. And for beginners, this can be quite helpful because they can actually see what they're building. Whereas if you use a language like Python, for example, it's a little bit less intuitive and you're working more in the console or the terminal with text based applications as opposed to full user interfaces. Now, while there are tons of jobs that require JavaScript, you're not going to stand out as much as if you knew another programming language, because this is a very competitive field and pretty much everyone learns this language. So yes, it can be a very fast way to get into software development. But just keep in mind that if you were to pick another language, you may actually have some better prospects in the job market, because it's going to be a little bit less competitive, and you'll know a more niche skill. Regardless, great language to learn one that I use all the time and that I recommend to a lot of beginners that like to work on the front end. Anyways, with that said, let's move on to the next one. But before we do that, I want to tell you what drives me absolutely crazy as a developer. And that's when a website slows to a crawl or randomly goes down and you're stuck playing tech support just to keep it running. Now, that's why I like today's sponsor Kinsta. It's managed hosting for WordPress that actually takes the stress out of running your site. They handle all of the hard stuff like speed, security and backups. So you can focus on, you know, keeping your business running. Now your site can run up to 200% faster thanks to their Google Cloud Platform Network, 37 data centers and 300 plus CDN locations. And if something goes wrong, you're talking to real WordPress experts, not chatbots or AI. Any time of the day, any day of the year, you can access their experts. Now they've even earned the number one ranking on G2 for WordPress hosting trusted by over 120,000 businesses from agencies managing dozens of sites to companies like ClickUp and Streaming Frog. So if you're tired of being your own IT department, switch your site to Kinsta and your site will just work. Not to mention Kinsta's control panel is so intuitive, you'll actually enjoy managing their site. They'll even handle the migration for you and your first month is free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Check out the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get started. Thanks to Kinsta. Now let's get back into it. Okay, so the next language on my list is of course, Python. Now Python is right up there with JavaScript when it comes to popularity. And it's another very beginner friendly language that a lot of people like to dive into. 
Now, Python is best for a few different tasks. Backend web development, so not necessarily building the website or the UI, but kind of the servers and the APIs for anything related to data science or data analysis, and of course, for machine learning and AI. So if you want to build AI agents, if you want to do you know, custom machine learning models, if you're interested in all of that stuff, then Python is definitely the go-to language and it really wins in that area. That said, it's not the best for people that like to make visual applications. It's very hard to make user interfaces with it. It's not the most performant language in the world for embedded systems or robotics. It's really not a great choice. And it does have some limiting factors, but it is still very versatile. So if you're someone who's interested in data science, machine learning, or backend web development, this is definitely a language to go with. However, if you want to make any kind of user interface, if you want to make high performance applications, if you want something that's a very fast performant new modern language, Python is not the choice for you. That said, if you're a complete beginner, it's probably the easiest language that you can learn and get started with, and then you can transition into something a little bit more capable later on. Now, for those of you that are looking for a job, similarly to JavaScript, there are tons of jobs for Python developers. However, they are usually niche specific. So Python web developer, Python data scientist, Python AI engineer, you get the idea. And while there is tons of jobs, again, it's going to be very competitive because pretty much everybody knows Python. So you're competing against literally every developer who knows this language, which is millions. Anyways, that's Python. Now let's move on to the next one. Moving on, the next language on my list is C-sharp slash .NET. Now C-sharp is similar to C++. It is the same family, but it is a bit of a different language in terms of performance and use cases. So it is still used for game development, for example. If you look at something like Unity, very popular game engine, uses C-sharp, and a lot of AAA games are made with C-sharp. That said, it's going to be less common for things like embedded systems or quantitative trading applications or anything that requires really, really high low level performance. And it's going to be more tailored towards large enterprises, companies like banks, for example, insurance companies, a lot of them are using C sharp. Now it can also be used for backend APIs, for web development, it can be used for cloud applications, a few other use cases as well that I'm probably forgetting here. But overall, it is a pretty popular language. It's used a lot in some of the older companies that have been around for a while, like a lot of software just built with C Sharp. And if you were to work as a C Sharp developer, it's very common that you'll be working on large, you know, enterprise grade applications that require the type safety and some of the features that C Sharp has. That said, it is used in some modern applications as well, but most startups in Silicon Valley are not coding everything in C Sharp. Anyways, if you are someone looking to get a job, this is definitely a good language to master and get into. If you are really good at C Sharp, you are going to stand out. There's going to be significantly less competition. And if you have that competency, you're usually going to get paid more than like a front end JavaScript developer. Moving on, we have the next language on my list, which is one of my personal favorites, and this is Go or Golang. Now, this is a relatively new language. It was developed at Google by Google engineers to solve problems that they had. It is essentially a Python-like language in terms of the syntax and the way that you write it with the performance of a language like C++. It is almost always used for cloud applications and backend services, especially for large distributed applications with things like microservices. This is not a beginner language in terms of its application. It is typically better suited for people that are mid or senior level engineers, and if you are going for a Go developer position, just keep that in mind that there's going to be fewer junior roles because of what you're typically doing with this language. That said, it is a very fun language to write in. It has a lot of great concurrency features and it has Python like syntax, which makes it fairly easy to learn even as a beginner and a lot more efficient to write than something like C or even C. -sharp. Anyways, Go I think is a great choice, but pretty much only if you're looking to get into kind of cloud development, microservices, large distributed systems, that's really where the language shines. And again, I think is a great one to check out and one of my personal favorites. Moving on, the next language on my list is Java. Now, Java, similarly to C Sharp, is used with larger enterprises, companies like banks, insurance companies can be used for large backend systems. And especially for some of the top Fortune 500 companies, they almost always have massive amounts of code written in Java. If you want a bit more of a stable career, you want to work for a larger company, then Java is definitely a good option to go with. It is very mature. The JVM is very popular. It means you can run the application pretty much anywhere. And again, this is just a good safe bet as a developer. 
Now, Java is also one of the most popular programming languages in the world, almost always comes in within the top five. It is very popular among large organizations, similarly to C Sharp, where you're gonna see it used at big banks, big insurance companies, government agencies. It's also very popular for Android app development. Now, Java has a very mature ecosystem. It is a very stable kind of career to get into because you're always gonna have a company to work for. And again, if you can become a really good Java developer, you are gonna stand out and find that's a little bit less competitive than areas like Python and JavaScript. That said, if you wanna go work in San Francisco for a startup with five people, this is not the language to be learning. And just to quickly contrast this to C Sharp, if you're working with C Sharp, you might be doing game development, but you're particularly gonna be working on Microsoft related stacks, again, using the .NET framework, you know, Windows servers, things along those lines. Whereas with Java, you're gonna be working with the JVM, it's a little bit more agnostic to Microsoft, so just keep that in mind. Regardless, that is Java, let's move on to the next one. For the next spot on my list, I actually am pairing two languages and that's gonna be Kotlin and Swift. If you are interested in doing iOS or Android app development, then you pretty much just need to learn one of these two languages. Kotlin, if you wanna do any Android development and Swift, if you wanna do any iOS development. Now, just to keep in mind, you also can use Java, for example, for doing development on Android, and you can also use a language called Objective-C for doing development on iOS. However, the two languages that I presented here, again, Kotlin for Android and Swift for iOS, are the more modern, newer languages that are typically being adopted. And again, if you want to make mobile applications, you pretty much just use these languages, okay? There is other ways to do it. You can use something like React Native, for example, with JavaScript, but as someone who did that for over two years, I typically do not recommend that and I suggest using the native languages designed by those platforms to actually build these applications. Again, that's it. You want mobile apps, you need to use these. Next language on my list is PHP. Now, this is one that a lot of newer developers may laugh at because there's all kinds of memes going around, you know, PHP is a garbage language, etc. However, PHP is actually a very good language. It is something that pretty much built the entire web as we know it, and it's also very good for WordPress. Now, if you are a PHP developer, you almost certainly will know a little bit about WordPress and be working on a lot of WordPress sites. And actually, if you look at the web, a majority of websites are actually still built and maintained with WordPress, especially for smaller and mid-sized companies. So if you know this language, you actually have a huge advantage. You can get all kinds of work. And I can tell you, I worked with a senior PHP developer in DevLaunch. He had absolutely no issues getting jobs or even getting freelance clients because he was one of the few people who actually knew PHP and in today's market, pretty much no one is learning that. So while yes, it is an older language, it's used in more of like the legacy code, very few people are spinning up new PHP websites nowadays, there is a massive portion of the internet that relies on these developers and this language, so it's something worth considering. Again, maybe not the one that you wanna learn right away, but something that you can add to your toolkit to have a bit of a competitive advantage. Moving on, we have the next language on my list, which is Rust. Now, Rust is a pretty new language that is getting a ton of hype in the community. It has memory safety, which is a huge feature, and it's particularly used for embedded systems or anything that requires low level extreme performance, things like microprocessors, for example. I am not a Rust developer. To be honest, I've not used the language that much, but I just know that this is very popular. It is used for all kinds of low level services. And while it is not nearly as popular as something like C Sharp or C++, it is slowly gaining in popularity and good Rust developers are very hard to find. My bet is that if we look at Rust in the next 10 years, it's gonna be something that's very in demand and that people are constantly looking for good developers for because of the advantages of the language. So my assumption will be that if you were to learn Rust now, you'd be very happy with that decision in you know a few years from now. Again, I could be wrong on that, but that is kind of my thought process on Rust here. Newer language, not as adopted currently, but has a lot of great features. You can build some really cool stuff with it. And it's something that I think will pay off in the long run. Okay, now we move on to my last language, which is kind of more of a bonus because it's not really a programming language, but this is SQL or Structured Query Language. Now, this is the language they use for databases. You wanna do anything related to data analysis, data science, or even backend web development, you need to know SQL. You don't need to be an expert, but you have to have at least the basics down. This is something that has stood the test of time and is used in pretty much every single company, unless of course you're using a NoSQL database, but still SQL is just very, very popular. I'm not gonna go into it too much. The point is this is something that every developer I think should know a little bit about. So please consider learning it and I promise you, you will not regret it. Anyways, guys, 
That is my list. Those are all of the languages that I think you should consider in 2025. Of course, there are others, there are more niche ones, and I'm not going to tell you not to learn something, but that is the general consensus of what I've seen as popular and what makes sense. Now, if you want some one-on-one -on -one advice for your specific situation, you need some guidance, you're not sure what to learn, or you're more of an experienced developer, you're not sure how you should position or brand yourself, consider joining DevLaunch. This is a program designed by myself as well as two other senior software engineers. We personally work with you one-on-one -on -one through mock interviews, structured guidance, roadmaps, et cetera, to make sure that you're able to land a better software engineering position. We've only been doing this five months now. We've already had extreme results. We've gotten 10 plus people's jobs just in the past few weeks. And I'm confident that we can help you again if you have a bit of experience already in software development. If you're interested, click the link below, book a call with my team, and I will see you there. Anyways, that's the video, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.